Hey guys, welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So, uh, number, another episode of Meatloaf, uh, number 91. Uh, that's almost two years worth of meatloafs, which uh, um, that's a lot of meatloaf. <laughs> let's just let's just leave it at that. So uh, it's the usual uh, mixed bag of stuff, uh, and we got a little bit of work uh, at the end of it. Um, went to the flea market this weekend, picked up some items uh, of interest, and uh, got a weird hammer that we'll talk about. Uh, my uh, end mill guy was there again, so of course I can't walk by that, you know, and uh, <laughs> leave that stuff sitting. And uh, got an instrument that we're going to show you. Um, that's kind of a handy tool to have around the shop. We'll talk about that a little bit. And uh, oh, uh, I've got a viewer appreciation piece of viewer appreciation mail. Um, that's actually just a really nice story. And uh, so we're gonna uh, play our little part in that story uh, and kind of uh, close the loop on that, which is kind of neat. Um, been playing around with the Taft Pierce uh, surface grinder and. Um, that thing is grinding excellent. Um, that's the uh, the nicest grinder that I've ever used, and uh, so far, anyway. Uh, um, just been grinding some kind of odds and ends around here, just seeing how it performs, and uh, uh, taking measurements, and uh, just you know, just having a good time. I've been doing a lot of that off camera, and there's definitely going to be some grinding videos coming up. Um, as we have projects that uh, that need that work, so uh, uh, it's still on the damn pallet jack. So uh, I'm just playing with it on the on the pallet jack until uh, I find a good uh, space in the shop to park it. So uh, so anyway, let's uh, let's uh, let's get cracking. Uh, I got plenty of stuff to show you guys, and uh, sit back and enjoy. Okay, so let's get started here. Uh, this is the uh, the flea market scores for uh, this weekend. Um, some of these we're going to zoom in a little closer and look at the stuff. Let's do, let's do the easy ones first. Um, this is a, a, a Starrett uh, combination square head. and This is the forged and hardened uh, version. And uh, for those of you that don't know, the way you tell is the, the paint finish. Uh, the paint finish um, is the giveaway. The forged and hardened ones are, um, have a smooth finish. The cast iron heads have a, um, um, a kind of a wrinkle finish on them. Also, uh, you just look at the surface and it's, uh, um, and typically the corners are really sharp on the, uh, uh, on the forged and hardened ones because they, they, they're hard and they stay, uh, they stay crisp. Uh, this one's pretty much brand new and amazingly still, still has the scriber. Maybe they glued it in there, I don't know, but uh, everything's in good shape. 20 bucks for that. It came with this one here too. I, I bought them both together from a, an old guy there, uh, and we got to chatting a little bit. And um, this one's also forged and hardened. Uh, now this particular one is a Lufkin, and um, it's not marked as a Lufkin. The only indicator is the green paint, and it says hardened right here. And then this little knurled knob is kind of a uh, kind of a giveaway there. So uh, in fact. Uh, and uh, well I have a, a little Lufkin square over there I'll bring it out maybe and uh, but you know 10 bucks for that and 20 bucks for that so uh, that was a nice buy and that'll go in my uh, my little uh, my little trade box I think uh, well it's you know what I should rephrase that it's not really a trade box it's it's a uh, it's a box of stuff that as I upgrade my tools I, I've been putting things in there and my intent is to do something like uh, what Keith Fenner's done with uh, what's in your box uh, at some point. So, uh, uh, but stay tuned for that. The more details on that later on. But uh, anyway, that's probably where those will end up in there. So, um, and once again, I'm gonna I'm gonna get in closer on some of these more interesting items. In fact, I think we're ready for that. Let me move the camera, and I'll get in close. All right. So let's let's uh, uh, here's a here's a close up of these guys, just so you guys can see it. This one's got a little staining on it, no big deal. Uh, this thing, I don't think it was ever used, just looking at it. That's the Lufkin. And their characteristic is this knurled knob. This is the giveaway for Starrett. If you see one of those at a distance, you know, pick it up and look at it. And uh, that's the Starrett nut. It's really unique. Um, okay, all right. So this guy here, 
my actually my wife picked this up for me. She says, "Oh, hey, I got you something." And uh, I said, "Oh, really? What is it?" And she pulls this out, and I said, "Holy crap! This looks like some kind of alien combat weapon or something, right?" Um, now I'm not sure what kind of hammer this is. Okay, it it is definitely a hammer. It's got a little serrations here, very narrow face. Um, my first impression, it. It has a bevel here and a bevel here. I think this is some kind of roofer's hammer, is what I think it is. You know, this might be for splitting shingles or something like that uh, in there. And then this little kind of notch here uh, kind of looks like it might be put for pulling nails. I'm not sure. So maybe somebody out there knows. Um, it's got a little bit of marking on here. We'll, we'll look, talk about that in a second. It's got, this is a cool handle here. This is. These are leather washers that are stacked up on a rod and then shaped uh, to make a, a nice grip. And it's marked uh, uh, Versastahl, uh, V-E-R-S-T-H-L-T, Versastahl. And uh, uh, you know what, I can't quite read the other, the other thing. I'll, uh, I'll put something on that and highlight it and I'll, I'll post it on the screen there uh, for you guys so you can look at it. But uh, it's, it's quite the odd, <laughs> the odd bird, but it just has kind of a neat shape, kind of, I don't know, semi-Viking looking or something like that, I'm not sure. So, uh, you know, if you saw that on uh, Game of Thrones or something like that, you go, oh yeah, that looks like a cool weapon, you know? <laughs> I don't know. And it looks like it's got maybe tar on it or something like that. Or paint, I don't know, let's see here. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Might be tar, I don't know. Anyway, pretty trippy looking hammer there. I think she gave 20 bucks for that. Uh, and then these, who, kn who knows what that is. You know, maybe that's just to hang it. Um, or something. I don't know, kind of neat though, huh? Add that to the hammer collection, so. All right, so this next one, I uh, visit. Don't don't pay any attention to that. I visited my uh, my end mill guy out there, and um, let's see how do I want to do this here? Yeah. yeah, that'll probably work something like. That. Let's do it like that. Uh, I visited my end mill guy out there. Anyway, I got the story on it this time. Is he? This guy uh, won an auction for a uh, a storage um, locker that somebody abandoned or whatever, couldn't pay for anymore or something. And uh, anyway, there's about, I don't know, 300 pounds of, uh, of machinist junk in there, uh, end mills, and uh, that's where I got the boring head a couple of weeks ago, and or a month ago, and, and all that. So let's just kind of go through this. Here's a spotting drill, a 90 degree spotting drill. This is a, uh, uh, I can't remember. This is made in Sweden. Uh, this is actually a real nice one, pretty long, so it's good. Um, this is a Bassett uh, end mill and uh, pedigree, little corner radius there, three flute. I talked about these the other day. Um, this is half inch, which is a good size. Um, carbide countersink, okay, so it's got a high speed shank with a brazed carbide um, cutting edge on it, 90 degree. Um, somebody ground a little flat in there so that it'll re retain in a tool holder a little bit better. So that's nice. Um, oh, these guys here. This is a different type of uh, MA Ford uh, countersink. These are three fluters here. Um, I haven't actually used this type before. I have some three fluters, but not by MA Ford or uh, some other other kind. These are 90 degrees. Uh, they feel pretty good, so we'll we'll give those a try. Um, you know, the single flute ones tend to, to, to wag around a little bit, and multi flute ones like this stay centered a little bit better. Um, so we'll, but the multi flute ones tend to chatter uh, in tough materials, so uh, depending on their geometry. So we'll give those a try, see how those work. Might be a good one. A couple of high performance uh, 1032 taps. These are uh, Exo taps, uh, spiral flute uh, plug, uh, nice ones. You know, those are probably $13 a piece taps right there. So, uh, um, oh, here's another little uh, little solid carbide uh, uh, countersink, 90 degree, eighth inch diameter. Okay, pretty cool. And that's a SGS. Oh no, that's an MA4 too. 
Um, oh, this is cool. This is a uh, this is a little boring bar, solid carbide. Okay, ground little boring bar there. Okay, I don't think it's ever been used. These are really nice for small holes, and um, uh, the carbide shank is nice and rigid too. Okay, and let's see who makes that. This is probably scientific cutting. Yeah, scientific cutting tools. Uh, these are actually pretty reasonable. So if you ever need a Precision ground boring bar, scientific cutting tools is a is a good outfit. Uh, a little five flute or six, yeah, five flute, uh, half inch, little stub length there. Okay, um, this is a real nice one too. This is Destiny Tool, which is a pretty well known uh, cutting tool company. Three flute, um, this kind of tighter helix here. So uh, I don't know that one looks. That's I'm, I want to try that one. That one looks pretty tasty to me. Um, I think this is another boring bar. Oh yeah, this is another uh, another boring bar, kind of short and stubby there. Okay. Is that what they're? Yeah. Let's see what they call. Oh, it says groove tool, but uh, uh, maybe somebody regrounded a little bit because uh, you know it's it's got an angle, so I wouldn't I wouldn't call that a grooving tool. I think it's a it's a boring bar now, and it's been modified, but. It's still in pretty good shape, so um, um, anyway, that's solid carbide, nice. Yeah, there's, you know, a pound of carbide here, and then there's a double end, five fluters, nice and sharp, just waiting to chew into something. And I got the little box, too. Oh, yeah, another five fluter there. Oh, six flute. That's a six flute there. These are great for finishing around a, an edge like this. They leave just a beautiful finish uh, when you profile. Uh, not good for ramping. The chip clearance is, sucks on these. and um, um, So they're great for profiling around stuff like that. Uh, kind of a light finish cut. Okay, that's a good finishing tool. Um, so this, all this stuff here, this was um, um, 50 bucks. 50 bucks for all this. So that... You know, one of those, that's probably $75 right there for that end mill. So, you know, good buy. Definitely a good buy. And he wanted to sell the whole the whole lot to me, but uh, uh, it's more than I need and uh, more than I care to deal with. So uh, I passed on it. All right. So this next one, um, this is a... This is a small force gauge, okay? And uh, now I've always pronounced, it, pronounced this uh, Shatlin. Uh, that's how I've heard it pronounced, and so that's kind of how I pronounce it. It looks like Chatillion. Uh, maybe that's correct. I don't know. I've always called it Shatlin. Uh, they make scales and um, um, weighing uh, instruments and things like that. Uh, this is a, a small force gauge here, all right? Um, they, uh, I don't know, they made gajillions of these here. Let's get this thing out of the way here and we can kind of see this. And I'm just going to put this on here just because it's convenient to push and pull on it. So this particular one, if we can see the gauge there, this is 10 pounds total scale and it'll read to a tenth of a pound. And then we'll release it here. Yeah, okay. So, you know, you can measure, you can measure small forces here, either push or pull. And then it's got, you know, some accessory bits that you can put on it and, um, um, you know, hook onto things or push on things. So, you know, if you're doing uh, mechanism design and things like that, these are kind of handy for uh, um, getting calibrated with forces. Uh, or, you know, you can figure out counterbalances and all kinds of things. Or, you know, or, you know, you could just weigh stuff, right? There's a pound, right? You know, you can just hang something from that and there's a pound, right? Uh, either push or pull. And like I said, this is just a, it's just a lock that keeps you from, um, from damaging the gauge if this thing gets bumped or dropped or whatever. Um, you can also mount these to something like a little arbor press or, um, um, you know, put them in the Bridgeport head and you can actually push on something with a prescribed amount of force. Um, you know, for example, um, let, me, uh, let me grab something uh, just as a demonstrator. So say, you, you know, say you wanted to, to torque something, right, to a kind of a specific, uh, a specific torque, a very low torque or something like that. So you could do that 
in this situation by pulling pulling on that. Uh, maybe you couldn't get a normal torque wrench in there or it was a, a range of torque wrench that you didn't have. Oops, I should release that when I do that. And uh, so you can, you can do stuff like, I don't know, it's just limited to your imagination. So uh, they're kind of handy. Uh, this was 40 bucks. And um, you know, I have, I have another one that's a 50 pound, but this is kind of a, a, a lighter range uh, uh, that I've run into uh, wanting that uh, as well. And it's still got the box. The box is a little chowdered, but a uh, uh, little contact cement on that. And I think it'll be fine. So uh, yeah, there's, the, uh, there's the deal in the end. Anyway, that's uh, Shatland gauge. Okay, so this is a this is a little uh, angle plate that I uh, was fooling around with. I think I uh, I wrote a little blog article about squaring this up. Um, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I wrote an article about that about you know all the different surfaces that have to be perpendicular to one another on an on an angle plate like this, right? And I, you know, I did this in the mill uh, previously, um, and you know, it was just made out of a, a piece of heavy angle iron. There, in fact, you can still see the uh, the mill scale on it. And it was just kind of an exercise in uh, in how you position a part in the milling machine and uh, and and roll it from side to side, and how you you know retain this accuracy that you're that you're machining into it as you go. And uh, so go go back and look in the uh, the ox tool uh, uh, at Blogspot, um, and I don't know back a couple of years or whatever. There's a uh, there's an article about that. So uh, <clears throat> anyway, this thing was laying around, and you know I had done some scraping on one side, just playing around, and uh, uh, and I said, hey, well this is a good little project uh, for the uh, the new surface grinder. So. Uh, I kind of went at it with the surface grinder and just, you know, everything was relatively square, but uh, uh, I went back and, uh, and dressed all the sides and got it all nice and square, or more square than it was, and uh, then I've been doing some uh, kind of inspecting over here. Got my cylinder square out, <laughs> you hear that? Sometimes they, they, they chatter when you move them, you hear that? It's, it's a vibrating on the surface plate, so... Uh, so anyway, um, anyway, it came out pretty good, and uh, the finishes are nice, you know, just right off of the machine. And this is soft steel here, and that was a uh, what wheel was that? Um, Forty, I think it was a 46H wheel is what I was using on that. And uh, so now, once it's all uh, brightened up and shiny, now I want to go back and do a little 45 chamfer there. You can still see mill scale there, and uh, um, you know, put some. Put some uh, ground chamfers on all those uh, on all those surfaces. So anyway, playing around with it. Uh, right now, it's uh, uh, you know going around it in every every which way and uh, checking the sides to the faces and the faces to the faces and and things like that. Uh, the worst number I see is about three tenths um, right now. So, um, but uh, um, I want to work on that a little bit and see if we can get it uh, get it better than that so uh, anyway another future project that's you know what I've been playing with with the Taft Pierce grinder kind of off camera so okay so this next one this is this is a great story here um, a viewer sent me this uh, this hammerhead here and uh, his name is uh, John Offner uh, and he's in Gaston Oregon right now but uh, the story about this hammerhead starts in uh, Lemoore Naval Air Station. Uh, it's down near Hanford in, uh, I don't know, on, down near Bakersfield, uh, California, down that way. Um, anyway, John was a, uh, he uh, worked on air, aircraft down there, and uh, this was his hammer. And um, one day, I guess, uh, he was working on uh, some airplane, and um, they rolled up a, um, I think it's an auxiliary power unit, or it's a starting unit to start aircraft. So it's like a, it's like a a motor on wheels, and they bring it up and they start uh, uh, certain kinds of aircraft with it. And uh, anyway, uh, the operator for that, you know, I guess the uh, the, the handle was there, and uh, so they ran over the handle and they broke the handle uh, for this. Now, 
He didn't tell me what kind of airplane he was working on, but uh, what's interesting is he says, oh yeah, well they, you had to have this kind of hammer because we were working around liquid oxygen. So I'm going, geez, what kind of airplanes were they working on, right? So that's kind of cool. And I'll have to, I'll have to quiz John and uh, see if he can tell me what, uh, what they were working on there. So this is a non-smart, non-smarking, non-sparking beryllium copper claw hammer. Now, uh, I don't know why he needed a claw hammer, but uh, it certainly needed to be non-sparking and, uh, you know, they were tapping on something. Well, anyway, the handle got broken. He goes to the tool room to get um, a handle for it and the guy says well we don't have handles he says I'll give you another hammer right and he goes okay so he gives him a whole nother hammer and he takes this one and throws it in the trash and John says hey uh, you're throwing that out you're not gonna put a handle on he goes that nah. he goes can I get that back right so uh, anyway the guy gave him the tool room guy gave him the hammer back well he threw this in his toolbox and uh, seven more years in the in the Navy and then uh, he ret he got out of the Navy and he still had the hammerhead with him he uh, started an auto body business and um, and uh, and had his toolbox at the auto body business and this thing was rolling around in his in his toolbox at the auto body place for another 10 years and then after that I guess he retired after that and he's been retired for 20 years so this hammer had its handle broken in 1963 and uh, uh, I told him I go that's a great story I was two years old when uh, you were in the Navy and this hammer uh, handle got broken off and uh, anyway we got a big laugh out of that and and I said hey he goes I'd like to send this into the show right and, uh, and I said absolutely if you want to do that that would be great my only condition is that I you let me tell your story right and he said oh yeah no problem so uh, he sent the hammer handle in and I promised uh, to put a new uh, a new handle on this for him too and uh, so we're gonna get a we're gonna get a nice handle and we'll fit it to this and uh, we'll get this this hammer has been waiting since 1963 for a new handle and it's going to get one so uh, um, I ordered a handle from McMaster car so it should be here in a couple of days and that'll be a, a little video we'll put that uh, that uh, the handle in there and this uh, cool beryllium copper hammer will be back in service after 50 year break so pretty cool now uh, actually I'm going to zoom in a little closer and uh, I got something else to show you here too he sent me this and uh, we'll talk about this uh, this cool thing here a little bit too so okay so uh, there's a there's a close-up of the hammer too you can see that now uh, I don't know if that's I don't know if that's his initials or something there it says Barilco on it there and uh, same thing on this side and it, now I have some hammer handles but I don't have a, a rectangular one like that so I had to order one so there's that now apparently his son um, this is his son hands these out as business cards so this is a uh, this is an example of uh, what these 3d printers can do these days okay um, and um, so this is a ultimate 3d what is it, ultimate 3d.com you can see that and it's it's got all kinds of crazy stuff printed on it so you can get an idea of the capabilities now there, look at that that's a functional spring there okay um, it's got some different uh, different thicknesses here that it's printed just so you can kind of test flexibility it's got things like snaps so we're gonna put that in there click see that little snap popped in there okay and uh, you like so there's a screen some knurling now if I do this and insert this little guy here so I had to play around with this a little bit and figure out all this all the stuff that it did okay look at this we'll, we'll turn those gears Boop. so it's got a little crankshaft in there <laughs> pretty cool and a hand wheel so this is all printed as one piece and so looking at this pattern here um, it was let's see let me unhook this here I doubt it was printed like that so I think it was printed uh, 
I think this was all printed as one piece because I think it's a permanent assembly here. So my guess is it was printed like this, looking at this on this circular section here, uh, the way those ridges are. Okay, so uh, I think that's how that was printed. But that's pretty cool. Huh? You can uh, you can put that together, and now you got a uh, a working uh, bullshit grinder. <laughs> Look, they even got little clearances for the valve, or reliefs for the valves there, so uh, uh, kind of neat, huh? So, John, thank you very much. This is very cool, and uh, the, your story is awesome, and uh, we're going to put a handle on that for you guys and uh, uh, put this hammer back in service. And thank your son for uh, the cool little uh, business card there. And if you need, uh, um, I think his phone number is on here somewhere, too, so if you want to talk to him about stuff. Uh, there's the phone number, I think. I don't know if that's him directly or if it's this uh, ulta3d.com. So uh, anyway, check him out. So John, thank you very much for sharing all that. All right, so we get this rough saw cut piece here. Uh, this is for my dad's uh, um, water valve that he wants. So I'm using, this is a Mitotoyo square here. It's nice and thin. So uh, where some of the other little squares, they won't fit in between there. Um, this one kind of does, so it's kind of nice. Well, I suppose the other thing I could use, I could use one of those, uh, one of stand squares too. I didn't think of that. Hmm. Actually, you know what? stand wagons in here. Let's... Oh, yeah. that, that's pretty good. It's, that's one of those uh, bar Z squares there. Okay, so this is the uh, this end mill that I got at the flea market. So we're going to actually uh, test drive this little pup and uh, see how it, how it cuts. So. Let's raise that a little bit. All right, all right, fourteen hundred. Sure, I can go with that. Let's go down here. Well, you can see it's kind of a funky cut, but a saw cut, I should say. Yeah. All I'm doing is just I'm just squaring it up to uh, so I can hold it sideways in the vise there. So. Pretty good, nice sharp end mill. Okay, so I'm gonna deburr that, I'll flip it over to the other side, then we're gonna put a big slot through the middle of that. Okay, so we got the side squared up. Um, we're gonna poke some holes, poke some holes in it now. Uh, and these are just uh, starting holes here. Um, I'm gonna mill a, oops. I'm gonna mill a slot in there like that. Uh, that's about half inch. Make sure I'm on my number here. Thinking about cameras and angles. Now I'm not using a center drill because this is a stub length drill and it's undersized from my slot so I'm not too worried about positional stuff here.
Okay. So, in fact, this actually kind of removes most of the material there already. Then I'll drop that end mill through there. And uh, it won't really have much work to do in there. Right? Alright. Okay. So, got our half inch back in there. Line that up a little bit. So I'm going to come off of my uh, my first point a little bit, and then it's going to go in a little ways. I'm just going to hand hand feed this just because. Now I'll come down a little bit. Come back. Shatter. I'm going to come back out. I'm going to come back to my uh, my original number, which happens to be 700, and then I'm just going to cut that that end with a Z plunge. You see, it's in general much more cooperative. Okay, and then I'll come over to my other mark, which was 1.3, and do the same thing. Hey, nice and mellow and nice and straight too, okay? So, let's see here. Yep, a little over an inch. So the, uh, the valve lug on the water valve is, it's about 3 8 by 1. This will make it easy to put on and, uh, uh, you know, he's going down a hole to put, the, uh, to put this on the valve actuator. So, all right, so there's the... Uh, a little rotator uh, after I cleaned up the ends. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to add these on like this and you guys go what the hell is he doing there? Um, the reason is I want him to have a clear view as he's putting this thing down there so he can see as much as he can see around this thing when he's uh, dropping it down in that hole uh, to rotate the valve. So I figured I put this kind of fork assembly here, like, so let me see if I can stand it up. Okay, maybe I can. Something like that. Oh, come on, stay. Oh, there it is. Something like that, and then I'm going to add the uh, the rotating rod on to this. Then he can see, you know, where he is. He's got a clear view down there, and this should be plenty strong enough to to rotate that valve element and uh, and get it done. So let's get these tacked on here so I can get it fitted up here so I'm just gonna <clears throat> use my uh, my welding duck and some eyeball eyeball centric here so this should this should hold it while I get a get a little tack on it there get it positioned the way I, the way I want so you know this is like some people call these third hands or something like that so now I got enough I, I can get a good tack on that let's uh, let's do that just a little quickie right there. Okay, slicker cream cheese. Okay, rotate that around. Make sure, I got the right side down there. And then, you know, after they're tacked, I can tweak them around a little bit, too. Actually, looks pretty good. It's just a valve turner, so <laughs> I'm not getting too, uh, too carried away here. All right. And now 
I gotta do a little massaging here. And then um, we're gonna get this, uh, this part fitted up here. These will be pulled in a little bit more. All right. This is our rotational rod here now, and what I want to do is I just want to use it as a guideline. <coughs> excuse me, a guideline to uh, actually let's use the fine side here to cut that. So I'm just going to mark that because what I want to do is is just cut that out. So this, this drops in here and then I get a nice weld prep and uh, a nice solid joint there. So now, uh, you know what? That looks like a hacksaw job to me. So let's, uh, let's go uh, grab a hacksaw and we'll lop right through that. Okay, so I'm gonna use the old fingernail start here. Get a nice straight start. so I don't kill myself on it, right? Okay, so now we can put our rod in there. Alright, oops. You know what, I need to, need to hold that from rotating. Um, I can just hold it for a minute while I uh, while I tack it, and then then I'll uh, I'll, I'll want to tweak it and true it up. So uh, let me uh, let's smack a tack in there. side looks pretty good um, so I'm gonna tack it I'm gonna I'm using a little stainless filler rod just because it's uh, it's softer and uh, you can bend it around and it won't break uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that but the magnetic forces from the arc made it wobble like crazy <laughs> All right, see if I can get another one here. All right, so let me uh, let me adjust it a little bit, and then we'll do some more welding on that and uh, finish the welding. here. 
here. I don't know what you can see. <laughs> Here's the cross handle, and then it, I just poked a hole in the middle of it there because um, I'm going to push this through. And uh, this way, you know, when you drill a hole through a tube like that, it weakens it considerably. But by passing this rod all the way through, and I'm going to weld on both sides here, I regain my strength uh, there uh, with that tube. So uh, I'll yeah, I'll just leave a little bit sticking out of the top. I don't think it matters. And then laying it on the table like this, you know, I have a flat at the other end here. So I orient nicely, you know, in a what I, you guys have heard me say, a workmanlike manner. So it would kind of be the pits to have this, you know, lopsided in relation to the flat down there. Uh, it, would, it would be tragic. <laughs> so let's stick them together and then we'll do a little final cleanup on this and uh, pack it, package it up. Dip stick. Actually, one of the things I was thinking about was, you know, how much torque can you put on this, right? Or how much wind-up is there? So maybe we'll uh, test that. That might be fun. So let's try that. It's operating a, uh, you know, a street valve, kind of like a sprinkler valve, but it's the main water uh, at the at the house. So, anyway, there you go, Dad. One uh, really expensive uh, valve turner. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>